Hi, here's a new tutorial. Uh, it's really a, an additional tutorial to the previous tutorial about creating artistic dungeons. We're just doing an extra thing and that is going to be adding a little bit more depth to it and feeling to it by adding a bevel to the wall. Okay, so we're going to assume that you've uh, listened and practiced the previous tutorial which was in fact about creating the, the dungeon. So here's one I prepared earlier. So let's just say we've created this dungeon what we do is we alpha to selection, make that invisible, and let's cut away our walls. So we um, go to the walls layer, hit delete, okay, there we go. Uh, what we're going to do now is we are going to grow this selection, and we're going to grow it by a 10, let's grow by 10. Okay, and we're going to go to our wall bevel layer. We're going to swap, we're going to make the foreground white. Easiest way to do that is just to hit that little swappy button there, click, and we're going to fill. Now, just, just a quick note um, the wall bevel layer opacity is set, is set to around 50%. That's just so things don't look a little bit too hard. So, yep, that should be about half, half opacity. So, we click that, we wait for everything to happen, it should fill with a transparency sort of white colour. And now what we do is we go back to constant to the corridor layer, right click, alpha to selection, go back to the wall bevel layer, and we're going to hit delete. Okay. So what this does is this just leaves a very, very narrow band of white. Um, if we have a look there, so a little, little narrow band of white. So that's without and that's with. What we're going to do is we now invert this layer and we're going to blur it. And we're going to use a Gaussian blur. And let's blur it by... Okay, so what you can see now is I'm just going to select all to get rid of the selection thing. So we've now added a wall bevel. So that's without the bevel, and that's with the bevel. Notice how it sort of it without the bevel, it looks like the wall is just floating above the ground, whereas this sort of just adds a little bit more substance to the whole affair. Okay. Uh, let's just zoom back out so we can get an appreciation for how it looks. And what we're going to be doing now is we're going to add some shadow. Uh, I've been through adding shadows in the previous one, but let's just do it again. So we um, this time we go to the walls layer and we alpha to selection. And we're going to again grow this, but this time we're going to grow it by 30 because I like Okay, uh, we go to the shadow layer. This time we want to fill it with black, so we need to swap that black back to black. And we're going to highlight, um, there we go. So now when we zoom back in, okay, that black is going to be the, um, the shadow region. Um, just for neatness sake, what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the walls layer, alpha to selection, and we're going to hit delete. Whoops, except we're going to make sure that we're on the shadows layer when we hit delete, otherwise bad things happen. Okay, now what we do is we invert this um, selection and finally we're going to blur it. So let's um, Gaussian blur and this time we're going to blur it by uh, let's say 150. Let's see. 
Okay, well that should look quite nice, I think. And we click OK. And we'll wait for it to do its thing. And there we have it. So we've added some shadows. So what we can see now is just by adding, so this is without the wall bevel and the shadows. That's the shadows alone. And that's adding the wall bevel. And as you can see, it does add that extra sort of touch there. So, you know, without the wall bevel, it doesn't look too bad. Without the shadows, it looks hopeless. So, add a bevel, add a shadow, and your map will look.